Hey guys, Media Rodolph, Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather in this morning update. I want to jump right into water vapor satellite imagery and give you the lay of the land. So on this particular imagery where you see the oranges and the reds, that's your drier air loft. The, the moisture loft is going to be in the whites and the blues. Here's our next storm system. This is the one that's digging through California and it will take a southern track and set up near Albuquerque and become an Albuquerque low and that tends to become uh, it can be a very good precip producer for Colorado, and that's really what the focus of this update is going to be, is on this panhandle hook storm system that sets up near Albuquerque. Now behind it, the flow is going to be fast into Canada, and will eventually send a cold front down out of parts of B.C. into Montana, Wyoming, northern Utah, and Colorado between 923 and 924. So that, that's what lies ahead. Here's my uh, bullet points for this forecast update. So again, a lot of focus on this Colorado storm system, 921 and the 922. It's really Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, Sunday morning. That's when the bulk of this will affect Colorado. And, you know, we have a lot of high peaks in Colorado. I think everything above 13. 13ers and the 14ers are going to see significant snowfall, and especially in a couple of different corridors. And I'm going to show you a high-resolution forecast. Um, this is a unique opportunity to do this, so I'll show you that coming up. But overall, it is a moist Albuquerque low setup with most of the snow above 9,500 feet. In fact, if you're above 10,000, you're even better off, um, even above tree line. Um, and then behind this, I mentioned this, this Canadian cold front that will zip south, 923 Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and then into Colorado, and probably linger on 924 through Colorado, New Mexico. Um, so I'll show you all that in this forecast update. I want to show you the forecast radar and the uh, the satellite here. All right, so here we are. Um, this is by 5.30 this afternoon, so waiting on our storm system. Here it comes, spins into the four corners. There's Saturday morning. Things start to get kicking by Saturday afternoon. You can see all the green beginning to develop as the low sets up near Albuquerque. We start to get the rotation around it, and all that heavy precip flows into Colorado and over the mountains. It's a moist, juicy storm system. And that'll be reflected in some of the totals, the snow totals that I show you here. But that Saturday, just starting to get going. Now, by Sunday morning, colder air filters in, and we start to get a lower snow level, down to probably 9,500 feet through the mountains of Colorado. Heavy rain, potentially, down through the foothills at lower elevations. Again, at the lower elevations, it's all rain. Rain down into Denver, a very cool Sunday in Denver in the 50s. Not a lot else going on across the West. I mean, it's mainly all about this storm system. The jet stream is supporting this and that's the big game in town now behind it um, that canadian front watch it come down out of bc and then it drops down into montana wyoming clips northern utah and into colorado but snow levels are very high with this even higher than this last storm system and then it just sits and spins through the 24th even the 25th it just kind of waits it's stuck in this big trough across the west and then we reach a little bit of a transition period here comes the next storm system up into the Pacific Northwest, hits BC, Pacific Northwest, and it kind of takes its time. It runs across the northern tier for a while, but then by Sunday, watch what happens. It starts to drop a front down through Montana, Wyoming, and potentially into Colorado, and we could see a focal point for some snow, but that is a long way off. All right, let's jump into the high-resolution forecast. So this is what we call the WERF model. This is a good opportunity to use this on a setup like this. With a moist storm system, things are complicated in that we have a definite rain snow line that's going to be shifting around. So you need a model that's high resolution enough that can not only identify the landscape, the complex terrain, but the changing dynamics and thermodynamics in the atmosphere. So this is four kilometers, very high res. So what you're looking at the bottom is a timeline from right to left. Um, dry air is orange. This is all relative humidity at all levels of the atmosphere. It's very dry with the oranges at first, and then just notice the wall of moisture. That's what I want you to see here in green at all levels of the atmosphere, surface up to, you know, potentially jet stream. So it, we hit that wall of moisture. That's the storm system, and this is Cottonwood Pass in Colorado. So I want to focus on the Swatch because I think that's where a lot of the heaviest snowfall is going to be. And you can see it, a wall of moisture over Cottonwood Pass in the Sawatch. Let me show you the forecast total snowfall. Um, so notice where the reds are. And again, this is the high resolution WERF model, but you're looking at the reds. That's 10 to 20 inches of snowfall 
over the, the Sawatch on the 13ers and the 14ers. That's a lot of area. It's also resolving 10 inches or more up in the Mosquito Range. So like Mount Sherman, Gemini, all the way up through Hoosier Pass, um, potentially a lot of those areas could see 10 inches of snow. And then probably four to eight inches up on the Continental Divide around Loveland and Berthoud Pass, uh, less down in Summit County, looking at about six inches over the top of the Elks. So Capitol, the Maroon Bells, um, Snowmass, those areas about six inches of snowfall, maybe a little bit more. But you can see the effect. Uh, a coarser model would not pick up on this heavy, the heaviest snowfall totals. It would think that the numbers would be lower over the highest peaks. But with such a juicy storm, I think you gotta re you got to resolve to something like this. And let me just do a little more detailed look at this. So this is for Winfield. So we're in the Sawatch. We're looking at a Sawatch forecast again around the Belford Group, around Huron, around La Plata. So you, you can see it. What I want you to focus on is the two lower categories, the two lower boxes, the green and the blue bars. So it's thinking that we're going to get about an inch of total liquid. 10 to 1 ratio, that's at least a foot of snow. It's forecasting 10 to 20 inches. In particular, 15 to 20 inches for this particular location. So that fits with, that definitely fits with this forecast that I was showing you with that, that bullseye right over the top of the Sawatch and potentially a bullseye over the Mosquito Range of Colorado. Very interesting setup, a juicy storm system, and I thought I would just take a little different tact with this and show you a different angle. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it, and take care and have a great Friday.